Hi, uh, my name is Lalindra Amarasekara. I call myself a visual technologist. Um, I um, use different mediums and technologies to create multi-dimensional experiences uh, for people in public places. And it's been a, a seven-year journey for me um, through uh, learning, collaborating, and um, experimenting and dreaming. And this is uh, part of what I do. I create motion graphics on a computer most of the time and also build systems um, uh, that are not off the shelf to control various types of mediums and technologies to deliver a particular experience. And part of what I do is also uh, I am a fabricator and a builder. In, in the whole process of creating multi-dimensional experiences, I engage myself with building and fabricating various things for staging, events, installations, so on and so forth. And it's usually, um, uh, uh, yeah. And also, uh, I work with things like this, uh, with, with data transmission and video transmission. And it involves a lot of server technology um, where we connect a lot of uh, uh, computers, lighting, sound, and video to work together to deliver a single experience. So it's, it's all these things coming together. Seven years ago, I started a company called Cyber Illusions. And if you have heard of me, this is possibly one of the things that you might have seen because I'm sort of known to do this particular thing. Well, if you ha haven't, then Shame on you. <laughs> well, uh, well um, the projection work has taken us out of the country as well, and this particular project is an audiovisual installation done in Oman uh, for a military technical college for their graduation ceremony. It is a, a nine minute show that takes place, and we do this every year. Uh, we've been doing this for three years. And in my free time, I explore and experiment with uh, 3D and graphic design. And the main reason I do this is an exercise to understand uh, how people perceive and experience perspectives, dimensions, colors, which translates to things like this. And this was a collaborative project that I did with a multi-talented music producer, Aswajit, uh, for Columbus Cope. This was a room that when you enter the room, your position and your movement determines how uh, and what you see and hear. And it's also slightly claustrophobic. Sorry, claustrophobic. <laughs> um, then uh, I also experiment with uh, uh, movement and um, how we can capture movement of people and how we can take it, process it, and deliver it back and create augmented experiences which combines graphic and real world experiences. Also, in the design, I tried to break convention like symmetry and balance. And we try to use a lot of abstract uh, design in, in this. this. This is a projection and light installation that was done for an event. And the process for this uh, starts like this. It starts in a studio with some board and some glue and some um, cutting knives and even the technology might be complicated, the process is pretty traditional. And this is the way we look at all, uh, that I look at all my work. Another aspect of it is performance. And this is, was a performance uh, done with a series of artists, including Aswajit and Muvindu as well. Um, this was an audio-visual performance where six artists were on stage and the visuals were synchronized to, 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 to the time and the music. And in order for that to work, I had to build a customized console that took audio from each of the artists, processed it in real time, and we created real-time visuals which delivered an, a cohesive experience to the audience. It, it was a 20-minute uh, choreographed narrative. And again, we're working with another from Columbus Cope. This was a collaboration with uh, the, uh, um, the Chamber Music Society of Colombo. Um, working with classical music is quite interesting, especially with the piece that was chosen here. So um, what I used there was I used mathematical fractals to create landscapes behind the band. And in this particular uh, uh, 
uh, installation is where we capture microseconds of video and reprojected them as a mosaic showing the present, past, and emulated future right in front of the people standing in front of it. Creating illusion is a big part of it, and this is what excites me. And illusions like this is what I pretty much live for. So what happens here is the box in the center, we um, made it so that the audience always questions whether it exists or not. You, you might see light rings going over the box, but in reality, it does not happen. You might think the box is trans sorry, the box is translucent, but it's not. Um, these are real physical objects, and it's video creating a visual illusion. Again, this process starts in the very most basic form, where we start sketching ideas, where I take the idea to a fabricator, sometimes uh, a programmer, and sometimes just somebody from a complete different field. We discuss it, we talk over it, and we try to see what works and what doesn't work, and that is the process. And sometimes all of this is not uh, easy to produce. Um, like in this instance, this was again a performance done for Columbus Group with myself and, and Aswajit. Um, we, uh, uh, a few days before, we realized we were, we were not able to use the projection system that was in, installed in the Colombo Planetarium, and we had to devise our own system for that, which was quite exciting. Uh, it is not easy to do. Um, and this particular uh, picture, some of you might have seen because of the, um, the social media um, uh, views that it got. This today is the largest 360 degree projection that is done in the world. This is the Ruan Valley Sayer, and we worked on a projection project uh, here. And a lot of people really didn't understand what was going on, and we really, we really got a lot of social media backlash about this. Um, but this seems to be quite synonymous with the type of things that we do. And I'm, we are getting sort of used to it and learning how people react, so on and so forth. But I'm happy to be talking about this and all the projects that I showed you. Thank you very much. Any questions? This is really interesting, uh, the stuff that you do. Could you share a bit on uh, the journey of how you became a visual technologist? Because it's something that a lot of people want to become, but they don't know how, yeah. Um, OK, where do I start with that one? Um, it, it, it was mainly because I um, used to be quite a curious person. I'm always curious about how things work. Uh, and I all, I mean, as much as I'm in store in, in, uh, interested in technology, I started off as a programmer, and I moved on to advertising, and from there onwards, I started doing events. Long story there. But, but, I'm, uh, but my, how I became interested in this whole thing is because I realized that at the end of the day, the technology is quite interesting, but the outcome and the illusions that it can create is, is quite powerful, and learning what makes these things happen is what really interested me, and I went exploring, experimenting, uh, using light, sound, uh, looking at how spacers can be used in uh, particular forms, so on and so forth, and this explorative journey has taken a long time. It was, a, it was not a really um, open space for, to learning, but it was rather a process of experimenting and trial and error and doing mistakes. And yeah, so that's pretty much how it all started. Um, you said you usually start sketching before you commence any project. Why do you think it is essential to sketch, being you dealing with a lot of technology, you can use software as why sketching? Uh, good question. Let me clarify. Uh, when I say sketching, it happens on paper, but not all the time. Sometimes the sketching hap does happen on a computer. I do it on my phone. Um, the, how, how I 
spoke about sketching is it, it's more of the process because when we start on and building an experience, it is never about the technology. We don't think that oh, we can use projection, we can use LED screens, we can use interactive sensors. It's not like that. We try to think about what the audience feels and experiences with, without thinking of the way that we deliver it. First, it's the idea, and then we try to find, okay, what will make this idea work? And that's how, and that's why I talk about uh, sketching as the route to the final uh, execution.